Hi, thanks for joining me today on my YouTube channel. Okay, I've got hair all over my face. It's been a few weeks since I posted. We've been busy with family visiting for the summer and I also volunteered at a youth camp, which was super fun. But now I'm back and I ordered a whole bunch of books from Book Outlet. So I'm gonna do a little review of the books that I got and also a review of the Book Outlet and let you know the quality of the books, um, how bad the blemishes are, and things like that. So come along and see these books with me. Alright, so first of all, these books from Book Outlet come from um, different stores that have sent these books to the book outlet because of some cosmetic blemishes. There may be marks on the pages or little things on the covers and stuff like that. So I was a little worried um, that they, they wouldn't look new. However, I am happy to say that these books are super high quality. Um, the blemishes are very minimal in most cases. For example, this one, Ruby Red Shoes. The only thing I notice is the back here. Um, there's some black markings. So other than that, it's, it's a perfectly sound brand new book. Let's start with the books that I got that I'm going to send back. Speaking of which, they have great customer service. Um, I am really picky with the books that I get and the books that I keep in our family library. I want them to be uh, really good literature, really well written, really great illustrations. And if they don't meet those standards, I don't really want to keep them in our house. We have a limited amount of space, right? So I want to fill those shelves with the very best books. And so I was a little nervous ordering online some books that I've never flipped through, never heard of, um, but I just crossed my fingers that they would be good. And some of them really didn't meet my standards, but I was happy to learn that the book outlet has outstanding customer service and they accept returns. It's pretty simple. You go into your account, create a ticket. I just said, hey, I want to send these books back because I just don't really like them. That's the only reason I gave. And they said, yep, that's fine. Um, go ahead and send them back. The one thing you have to be aware of is they won't email you. You'll have to go check back in to your account to see the response for that. So all I have to do is pack them up in a box and ship them back. I do have to pay for shipping, but other than that, um, really great return policy. Night in the Country. This one was okay. Um, I wasn't super impressed with the type and the color of the text. This one I didn't see any blemishes on it at all. It has colorful illustrations. The text is yellow and I don't really like that. The illustrations are not my favorite. They're okay. But this book didn't really wow me with its text or its illustrations. And so it is getting sent back. But it's not a bad book. What noise comes from a giraffe? Now this was specially requested by my little six-year-old son. He really wanted this book. And it does have a little marker blemish right here. Um, he read it and he came to me and he said, Mom, this book is just a joke. It didn't tell me what noise a giraffe makes. <laughs> and it is a joke. It goes through and asks what it goes through and says the different noises the other animals make. And then at the end it talks about tickling the giraffe's tummy and the giraffe laughs. So it does not tell you what noise a giraffe actually makes. And so we're sending that back because... He was a little disappointed with it and, you know, it's not like amazing illustrations or anything like that. Mega Structures, Tallest, Longest, Biggest, Deepest, I thought would be a really cool book. Um, and it is pretty cool. It's just, I mean, it's got good photographs. I just feel like each page is packed with so much stuff that it's a little overwhelming. The text is not quite bite-sized enough, I don't think, um, 
for the kids to stay interested. And then it does have these cool fold out pages, but the paper is very, very thin and will rip very easily. We actually have a book about bridges and buildings um, from Osborne, and its pages are very thick and its information is very bite sized and its fold outs are nice and sturdy. And so I'm going to send this one back because it covers a lot of the same stuff, even though this has a lot more pages and a lot more information. I just feel like it is too overwhelming for the kids to stay interested in. And it's kind of nice for me that I have ADHD and dyslexia because then I can tell if it's overwhelming for me, it's going to be overwhelming for my kids. And so that's a little radar for me. Um, to, to let me know, hey, this isn't going to work so well for your kids because it doesn't work for you. The Moon was the best. Um, so the little synopsis on this book I really liked because it's about a family who goes to Paris. Well, actually a mother and father who goes to Paris and leaves their little girl home and they, they write to her and tell her what was the best. And instead of like the Eiffel Tower and the really popular things, it just talks about, you know, everyday life and kind of the common things that are in France. Paris. Paris, France, right? So I got that expecting like more, I guess. The photographs are okay. They're not amazing to me. Um, the text isn't, it's kind of, it's okay too. But you know, to me, like this could have been a really, really awesome book if, if instead of these just okay photographs. There was like great illustrations. Um, I think I would have kept this. Um, but you know, I just, it just didn't wow me. The photographs just didn't wow me. And so it's going back. It's not a terrible book. It's pretty good, but it's going bye bye. Quick as a cricket. I actually had this board book version. Um, several years ago, a lot of years ago, and I really liked it. And so when I saw it, I thought, oh, I really want that. And, you know, it is really cute. It's rhyming text. It is a really great book. The illustrations are pretty good. They're a little out of proportion, but they're really colorful and fun. And it is a really good rhyming text story. I just decided I like the board book better because it's just small and this was when all my little kids, my, well my oldest who's 17 now was young and this is really a book geared towards younger children and so I decided, you know, it's really not something that we need in our library at this point in our lives. The Great Dictionary Caper I thought would be such a cool book because um, in the synopsis it talked about how, you know, it's teaching about different kinds of words um, like the onomatopoeias and uh, the longest words, verbs. So it goes through and it, it, it tells the different kinds of words, but it's just the illustrations to me are kind of like distracting more than it doesn't like draw you in, I don't think. It's kind of dis distracting. And it's kind of all over the place and instead of making it more interesting and and easier to learn these different kind of words to me it like is scattered and makes it more difficult to learn that's just me like other people might love this book but for me and my kids it's not really gonna work so that one's going bye bye tales from history ready to read this was for my son, my six-year-old son, and it's a good early reader. It's a really good true story. The pictures are okay. It's just that he's kind of past this level already. He's kind of skipped this early reader stage. Um, and I do, I would like to get a picture book about this little otter, Tula, because it is a really interesting story, but I'd like to get one that has really magical illustrations. So we'll see if we can find one. The Tomton and the Fox. I got this because I've been really into Waldorf education and Waldorf education um, talks a lot about 
fairy tales and gnomes and things like that. And the Tom Tom is, is like a little fairy gnome. So this is kind of, kind of cute and the illustrations are really great. It's about this little fox who is hungry and goes to the farm to try to catch some chickens and then the little Tom Tom comes and gives him some porridge instead and says don't eat the fox or don't eat the chickens and um it's cute it's just not one I want to read over and over so here's the little red mark back here that is why it's a second hand book this is the maybe pile I might keep these I might send them back so this is Beatrix Potter nursery rhyme book and of course I love Beatrix Potter. Her illustrations of these animals are just absolutely stunning. Um, and I also wanted some more poetry books. The reason why I might send this back is just because I am not a huge fan of the fonts that they chose. And these cute little rhymes that come from Beatrix Potter's stories don't really make sense out of context, most of them, but look at these beautiful illustrations. This is why I might keep them, just because the illustrations are so beautiful. But yeah, I, I may send it back. Um, have to think about this one. So this one on the back, it's this hardcover that's kind of poofy, kind of hardcover with the poofiness. And it's got a few little rips in the back. So that's why it's from the book outlet. Child of Saint Kilda. This book I want to love, you guys. This book I do kind of love. Um, this could have been like the most amazing little picture book ever in the world. Because some of the pictures are amazing, like the cover here. Look how gorgeous that is on the inside. And it's so interesting. It's such an interesting historical book about St. Kilda, these little islands here, and specifically Herta. Um, was it Herta? Anyway, it's specifically the island that these people lived on. And like I said, some of these pictures are gorgeous, but then some of them are just, are really not. And instead of being, okay, here's another gorgeous picture, but instead of being a living story that draws you in and follows like this boy that lives on this island and all the things that happen on the island, it is actually a textbook. The, the words are textbooky. It just tells you the information, which is really, really good information and it's really, really interesting. But it is not a living book. It is not a living story. It is a textbook with illustrations that are, some of them are bad, some of them are okay, and some of them, a few of them are really good. Um, in the back, it also has some sketches from the artist, which I think are amazing. Look at these amazing sketches of the people, but then in the finished product, the people just don't look that good. And then these sketches are absolutely gorgeous too and it gives you some more information about the island and the animals and life on the island. See how beautiful these are but then again see look at these beautiful puffins here but in the actual storybook like they're not they're not that well done. And especially these sheep, they're just, yeah, it has so much potential and it just didn't come together. Like, if it was beautiful illustrations throughout, if it was a living story, like, this would probably be one of my all-time favorite books. That's why I say I might keep it, even though it is very textbooky and the illustrations are lacking. Bones in the White House. So this one has good illustrations, it's about Thomas Jefferson, the paper is nice and thick, it's got pretty illustrations, it's an interesting story, 
about how Thomas Jefferson was really into collecting fossils, bone fossils, and especially fossils of the mammoth. Um, and he was, he was really interested in that kind of stuff. And it goes through and follows his story about how he finally got enough bones to put it together with help from others. Um, and then at the end, those bones went missing. And then it has some extra information about it. It's just, the, it's a little PC. The story's a little PC. Like, the words don't flow. Okay, here's the little mark, the little blemish. And, yeah, it just, it wasn't written as well as I would like it to have been. So I'm, I'm going to return that. Okay, the dress and the girl. You guys, this one's so cute. The illustrations in this are beautiful. The paper is thick and high quality. It's a really simple story about a dress that this mother makes for her daughter and the things that the dress and the girl do together just going about daily life and then sometimes life changes right but sometimes you still do the same things even though you're moving to a different country um, the dress gets left behind somehow and it travels around looking for the girl she grows up um, the girl buys it at a secondhand store and her daughter wears it so it's a really cute story. The reason why I was thinking I might take it back is because I want more information about what's happening. Like, why did the dress get left behind? Where did this girl come from? Like, what country did she live in? What city did she live in? Why did she move to America? But at the same time, maybe that's part of the story. It makes you wonder and makes you think about these things and you get to kind of decide for yourself with the clues of where where was she from where did she, why did she move why was she separated from her dress so I think I am gonna actually keep that one this one the back cover is quite dirty um, just the just the dust jacket the backpack without the dust jacket is perfectly fine science verse and science verse like I said before I wanted some more poetry books and I thought this one would be great because it's about science and poetry. So the illustrations are definitely captivating. They're kind of weird and scary and a little gross and that's why that's one of the reasons why I might not keep this one. Um, I do like some of the poems. Some of the poems I'm not a huge fan of but most of them are fun and funny and teach different mathematical and scientific concepts and um, words. This one is really good. I'm gonna read that one to you. Miss Lucy had some matters. She didn't know its state. She only had three choices, so tried to get it straight. She thought it could be liquid, quite possibly a gas. And if it wasn't solid, well, call me a sassafras. Miss Lucy called the plumber. Miss Lucy called the cop. Miss Lucy called the egghead with the perfectly bald top. Liquid, said the plumber. Solid, said the cop. Gas, said the egghead with the perfectly bald, perfectly bald, perfectly bald top, top, top. So this one is, is fun. It's just maybe not one that I want to keep because the illustrations are not ones that I absolutely love and I don't love every single poem. But I do like some of the poems. Definitely one worthy of checking out from the library and reading. Here are the books that I 100% most definitely am going to keep. Miss Rumpheus is actually the reason why I started buying these books. I really have wanted this book for a while, especially since I listen to the podcast, the Read Aloud Revival podcast, special edition about Barbara Cooney. And I was like, oh my goodness, I need to own Miss Rumpheus. And I need to own every single book that Barbara Cooney has written and or illustrated. So this book is just beautiful. The story is just beautiful. I mean, every illustration is absolutely amazing. So, definitely excited to have this one in our library. Painting Pipette. Pipette, Pipette. Pipette is a little bunny of this girl that belongs to this girl. 
You guys, I love the illustrations in this. They live in Paris, obviously. Um, oh, the pictures are so gorgeous. So this little girl wants a portrait of her bunny because everybody else in the family has a portrait. So she goes to downtown Paris and these artists offer to paint the bunny. Um, she doesn't really like any of them, but she's very polite as she, as she tells them, you know, it's not exactly what she was looking for. And she decides to paint her own portrait in the end. And this is kind of cool because these artists are actually based, they actually are Pablo Picasso, Salvador Dali, Marc Chagall, Chig Chagall, and Henri Matisse. And then it talks a little bit about the 1920s in Paris, how it was such a creative city. Um, so I think this book would be a really good introduction to like art study of these different artists or even the study of Paris. And it's just fun. It's just cute. The illustrations are great. So yeah, that's definitely one we're going to read and reread. This one is just a charming book. Um, I have another book by David Small, and I enjoy his illustrations. They're a little different, but they're... I like them. And this is also written in the voice of this young boy out in the country. And so it has that different dialect that kind of old country style of talking. So I'm going to just read the first page. My folks and me, we live way up as up can get. So high we hardly sight a soul, except hawks a winging in the sky and critters hid among the trees. And this is about this family who live way up, like it said in the introduction in the country, and this lady comes and brings them books. And she is this librarian, and this boy actually learns how to read because of the work of this librarian. And then in the back, it talks more about the true and courageous work of the pack horse librarians known as book women in the Appalachian Mountains in Kentucky. So yeah, that's definitely one that is historical and is fun, and it's nice to introduce kids to this different style of language. This is my favorite counting book ever. You guys, it's so cute. And most of my kids know how to count, but actually all my kids know how to count from 1 to 10 at least. But the pictures are so cute in this, and it's this very, very cute rhyming text. And it's not only a counting book, but it talks about this natural phenomenon, how the birds, when they're threatened, will all swarm together and swoop together in a synchronized manner as if they're, you know, one creature. And then also counts from 10 back down to 1. So yeah, this is definitely one that we will keep. The Eternal Soldier is the true story of how a dog became a Civil War hero. And the illustrations are fantastic. Um, the story is great. Of course it's sad. Um, but I think it's really good to have these kind of books that show hard things, hard times, that war is a sad thing, um, and, you know, expose our children to those kind of things. So yeah, really good, true little story about this little dog during the Civil War. Okay, this is one of my favorites, the Saving the Countryside, the story of Beatrix Potter and Peter Rabbit. You guys, this story is so good. These illustrations are so lovely. The pages are high quality, thick, nice texture. I did not know that Beatrix Potter um, actually did save the countryside. She purchased tons and tons of land. She saved, you know, animals that were sick. She paid for their vet bills. She just took care of these people out in the country and rescued these farms and animals and wildlife. And I think that was so cool. And then there's author's notes back here. And it's written really well. Here's a little bent page. I think that is the only thing that is cosmetically wrong with this book, is just that little bend in the last page. This one's so good, you guys. So good. You should get it. Okay, and then last but not least, Ruby Red Shoes. This book is so cute. 
I love how little it is. Okay, it's got a little blemish here, and then it's got a little blemish here on the back. Um, it just feels good in your hands. And look how cute those flowers are. These pages are extra thick paper. This is just charming. These little illustrations are so, so charming. And it's just a simple story about this little bunny named Ruby Red Shoes. And just her life, how she lives in this little cottage and all the cute little everyday things that happen and how just simple life is beautiful. So this is probably actually my favorite. Very, very cute. I hope you guys enjoyed looking through all these books that I got from the book outlet. And I just wanted to share with you my favorite library book from the last few weeks. It's Little Sap. It's super cute, really great illustrations. Um, and it's about a forest and how the forest trees take care of these little saplings that can't get any light because of all the shade. And I had no idea that this happened, you guys. This is really, really cool. And then in the back, it also has some extra information about the natural phenomenon of the forest and stuff. So check out that one. And my all-time favorite book I wanted to share with you guys, Red Sings from Treetops, A Year in Colors. I absolutely love this book. Um, the illustrations are a little different from the ones I would normally pick, but they're so well done. And just the text, the rhyming text, it's not rhyming. The poetic text in this book is just, I never get sick of reading this, you guys. I could read this out loud to my kids like every day and they could listen to it almost every day. They might get sick of it after, <laughs> after a while, but they really like it and I love this book. And so I wanted to end with a challenge for you guys. Reading a story to your children every day. I know a lot of times we read out loud chapter books, but we forget to read our picture books, even if you have only teenagers. But still, this challenge is for you. I'm going to link down below in the description um, a link to a podcast from the Read Aloud Revival that I just listened to today. I think it just came out today or yesterday. Um, and it talks about this reading challenge, reading a book to your children every day. It also has some resources that you can print out um, to keep track of your challenge. So there's either a week long challenge or a month challenge. I'm taking the month challenge. And so I encourage you guys to choose which one you wanna do and go ahead and challenge yourself to read aloud a picture book to your kids every single day this week or this month. And I hope you guys have a great week. Also, if you would like to purchase some books from Book Outlet, um, their inventory is always revolving, so they won't necessarily be the ones that I showed you guys. But they always have a huge inventory of books. And you can get $10 off if you use the code down below. This will also give me $10 so I can get more books, yay. <laughs> so if you guys wanna do that, go ahead and use that code down below. Um, they also have like, when I bought these, it was buy two, get one free. A lot of times they have an extra 25% off. Um, just so you know some of the price ranges. So for these nice hardcover books that are usually 15 to $20, um, the average price is anywhere between seven and $9. Most of them were like seven or $8. Some were nine, some were only six. Um, of course, sometimes they have like blowouts where the book's only like $2.99. The soft cover ones are a lot less. And then like I said, there's the buy two, get one free or the extra 25% off. Plus you can get the $10 off. So go ahead and check that out if you'd like to. Um, you don't need to do that obviously at all to do this read aloud challenge. You can use the books that you have. You can go to the library. Um, but anyway, get a hold of some good picture books and read them to your kids. And you guys have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye.